All right. Well, hasn't that been a fantastic day so far? Just absolutely spectacular. And um, I'm, I'm very happy with the result of the annual meeting, I can tell you. It always gives me grey hairs. Um, I, can, I can relax again. Um, all right. Look, this is our final session for today. Um, just one um, change. Um, our third presenter, Noura Labidi, um, has retired um, ill. So um, we just have two more presentations left. Um, uh, first up is um, Masum Bila um, on investigating health professionals' knowledge, attitudes and practices about refugees' health risk behaviours and healthcare utilisation in Australia. Take it away, Masum. Well, only cost student representative. Thank you very much. Welcome to my today's presentation. Uh, my name is Masum Billah. Uh, I'm basically doing my PhD in the Faculty of Health in Southern Cross University at Coffs Harbor campus. Uh, I would like to talk about investigating health professionals' knowledge, attitudes, and practices about refugees' health risk behavior and healthcare utilization in Australia. First of all, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land where we work and live. We are in Gambiagir country and we acknowledge the traditional owners of this land, the Gambiagir nation, and pay our respects to Gambiagir elders past and present. Well, uh, this is the overview of today's presentation. Uh, I will be talking about uh, this area of interest, which will comprise introduction, literature, philosophical, theoretical framework, and I will talk about methodology data analysis, results, conclusion. Who are refugees? The definition of refugee is a little bit different from different contexts, and we sometimes overlap with some other very associated uh, concepts or, I mean, issues like, uh, I think, asylum seekers, culturally and linguistically diverse populations, and that's it. Well, I will talk about refugees because my concentration is about refugees. Refugees are defined as people located outside of their country of origin for fear, conflict, violence, or other circumstances that have seriously disrupted public order. As a result, they need international protection. Refugees are underserved and underprivileged community having significant health needs. Refugees experience several health inequities in their health status. Inadequate attention and initiatives remain in practice to address these significant health needs in Australia. Well, the lenses of health professionals are significant in double-checking refugees' health needs and suggesting health promotion strategies. Health promotion remains inadequate in the Australian health system. Communication gaps and insufficient cultural competency appeared as established interaction barriers between health professionals and refugees. There are several health inequities in healthcare experiences. Approximately 27 million refugees were displaced forcibly for violence, conflict, and human rights violation in 2021 across the world. Out of them, around 6.8 million refugees displaced uh, from the uh, Syrian Arab Republic, while 1.2 million refu refugees became displaced from Myanmar. Australia is currently hosting almost 60,000 refugees and 80,000 asylum seekers. Most of them come from the Middle East or Asia. Well, access to healthcare is a continuous barrier for under sub communities across the world. The same scenario is also appropriate for high income country like Australia. 
Well, research suggests insufficient multilingual health materials for health professionals and community leaders is a considerable barrier for refugees to seek healthcare uh, services here in Australia. Inadequate female and ethnic specific services, healthcare provider shortages, higher health professional fees negatively affected the affordability and accessibility to pass health messages to this underserved community. Well, horse health promotion. Health promotion is a comprehensive approach to promoting health through multiple stakeholders and strategies. It's a response to developments emphasizing the inequalities, lifestyle changes, and cultural beliefs. For example, nowadays, anti-tobacco campaigns, which mostly use interactive technology like internet, social media, and mobile phones, received popularity to pass health messages to these communities for health promotional behaviors. Well, legal provision for refugees may differ based on national laws and policies across the world. Migrants are underrepresented in clinical trials. A study also suggests routine data for migrants has systematic inconsistencies and errors, which affect evidence-informed policy building and intervention practices. For instance, there is a considerable gap in between policies and implementations. Well, uh, this is basically uh, on a study of a uh, few studies of my PhD thesis. So this whole PhD thesis will be guided by social cognitive theory social ecological model and behavior change wheel model. This study investigates health professionals' knowledge, attitudes, and practices about refugees' health risk behaviors, what we call SNAP behaviors, and healthcare utilization, thereby suggests developing health promotion strategies for refugees in Australia. This is essentially a quantitative study design to conduct a cross-sectional survey. A web-based survey tool, Coltrix, will collect data via a structured questionnaire to achieve the overall objective of the study. All the states and territory where refugees concentrate in Australia especially New South Wales, Queensland, and Victoria will be part of this survey. We will be inviting all health professionals to participate in this online and offline survey. Healthcare professionals such as doctors and nurses are the study population for the current survey. This study will adopt convenience sampling to recruit study participants, social media, professional connections, personal connections, research groups, conferences, and universities will be uh, facilitating to share the survey link to reach uh, research participants. Well, descriptive analysis will be done to show the frequency and percentage distribution of variables of interest. At the same time, logistic regression model will be done to analyze survey data to determine the association in between independent and dependent variables. And also I will check both moderation or mediation effect. Well, as I haven't actually conducted this study yet, I will just give you some sort of potential research results what I might uh, get from this study. Uh, for health professionals, knowledge and attitudes, uh, we will collect data about smoking, behavior, alcohol consumption or abuse, nutrition disorder, physical inactivity, and also non-communicable diseases and other concerns like dental problems, mental illness. For non-communicable diseases, it will include lung cancer, cardiac complexities, which has a close association, very established association with health risk behavior like smoking and alcohol.
This project will contribute evidence to support effective health promotion strategies for refugees living in Australia. Potential research outcomes also suggests improvement of health literacy, availability of multilingual health materials and media to disseminate health promotion for refugees. And that's all, thanks. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Matt. I'm a great admirer of brevity. So that's that's fantastic. A really nice, snappy overview of your whole thesis. And um, we all wish you good luck in the um, implementation of that research project, I'm sure. Um, do we have any questions for Matt? Yes, okay. Thank you. Um, this question is, might be a bit silly, but is there a difference between, you said in the beginning, 60,000 refugees and 80,000 asylum seekers or something? I thought maybe they were the same, but are they actually different? Oh, there is separate? difference. Yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, okay, should I explain? Okay. I'm it's safe. okay. I just didn't know. It's crazy. No, no, yeah, it's okay. It's a very interesting question. I would mm. be happy to respond to your question. Basically, refugees who have already received refugee status in accordance with laws of the Australian government. And that is the on sort of they're getting some facilities and opportunities from the government like Medicare or something like this. But asylum seekers, they have applied for refugee status to the Australian government, but they haven't received refugee status so far, but they are just seeking some sort of, I mean, shelter or even any sort of like refugee people who are the get and they are getting facilities. Asylum seekers are looking for those things, but that hasn't been settled by the government still. So asylum seekers, are they in, like are any of them in Australia? Or yeah, they yeah, there are many asylum seekers. And they have no access to healthcare or? Uh, actually, it's a uh, tricky question because asylum seekers, those who have a legal status in terms of documents, they sometimes get afraid to meet, uh, uh, I mean, GP because a GP may want to know the more information about uh, them. Actually, that's sometimes tricky actually to play hide and seek in between GPs and also asylum seekers. So that's why they are not legally actually sometimes because they have uh, lots of problems with their papers and documents. So they don't feel comfortable, but even GPs also actually, they need the legal issues actually to um, give them treatment and care. So that's the question actually, but we have here uh, at the moment, Australia has uh, over 80,000 asylum seekers actually who are looking for refugee status indeed. Yeah, no, it's okay. It's, a, it's just the clarification for refugees and asylum seekers is the legal definition in, in terms of legal provision. Asylum seekers, those who are just seeking, I mean, shelter in Australia or even like per, uh, permanent residence or work facilities like this one. But in invisible sense, they're doing everything here and staying here. But the thing is that that are not legally um, validated in the uh, laws of Australia. So, so I assume you mean that um, you, you'll be including in your for the purposes of your study, you'll be including asylum seekers. Actually as not. Well as, as well as, oh, no. Oh, no, no, because actually, uh, um, because uh, my study is concentrating on um, refugees only, but not asylum seekers, uh, because uh, I'm just taking refugees in my study. Uh, one more thing, uh, once I'm doing systematic review at the moment, so when I just searched a lot of, uh, search of papers across the world, actually, especially I'm focusing on high income countries, for my systematic review, which is the first uh, uh, objective of my PhD. So uh, where I found actually there are lots of papers about asylum seekers and refugees. So even they have some more desegregated data in some studies. So I had to leave out asylum seekers because it's a big, big jumping. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, so your, your participants would be doctors and nurses, and but you uh, asking questions about refugees. Uh, well, just um, I'm giving, uh, uh, because I have time, right? Okay, I have some time actually to yeah. tell something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I'm just uh, presenting today one of the five studies of my PhD. So the main study of my PhD, the whole overarching objective of my PhD is looking for health promotion needs of people with refugee-like backgrounds living in regional Australia. So I mean, refugees who are living in Australia, either uh, I'm mostly regional, like they will be the main participants of my study. Then. As I'm trying to develop health promotion strategies, I'm not only looking at the views of the victims, I'm also at the same time going to cross check what's happening from the health professional or health providers lenses, how they visualize their problems. So that's, that's the actually cross connection issues actually. So based upon, I mean, 
qualitative study and also collecting some survey data from the routine data which is stored in top server uh, refugee community clinics over the past three years or four years. So I will be doing another study about the routine data. I will be doing another study asking the questions directly uh, refugees. It will be focus group discussion and in-depth individual interview like qualitative study. So I will take these findings and also survey-based health professional uh, uh, health professionals uh, responses based findings. Both findings I will be presenting in a particular workshop where I will be inviting both healthcare professionals, refugees, community leaders, and other stakeholders. So they will decide actually how I can actually build a health promotion strategy which will be most effective to reach this, this underserved or underprivileged outreach community to make sense how they can get integrated mm. with the high income country countries like Australian health system. That is the main motto of this research actually. That sounds very collaborative. Yeah, yeah, nice job. Any more questions? All right, well, I think, oh, yeah, uh, Carl, one last question from Carl. Not so much um, a question, but um, my grandfather was a World War II ref refugee um, and he, he really struggled coming to the country and not having the language and all that sort of thing. So just thank you so much. Like, it's just such important research and when it's a group of people like refugees and asylum seekers who are here because they're so afraid, holy heck, we need to do better as a country. And just thank you for taking on this project. It's, it's yeah. awesome. Thank you. All right. Well, well thank you, Masa. Um, I want to share one, one sentence just yeah, sure. about my PhD journey where I am actually. In the last month, I have been officially confirmed for PhD here in Australia. Uh, just uh, it was my proposal got accepted without any revision and the board panel and all the external examiners became really happy with this project. And thank you very much for your appreciation. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Well, um, Masa, we, we wish you all the best with your data collection and we expect to see you back here same time next year um, yeah. with some yeah. results. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>